Starting off this countdown, we have the wait. In 2008, a law was introduced which made it mandatory for citizens between the ages of 40 to 74 to have their waists measured regularly. Women can only be 35.4 inches and men can only be 33.5 inches. If you are found bigger than that, then you have to lose weight according to this law. Not only that, but you might even be subjected to fines. I mean, Japan is known for their low obesity rates and this is one of the factors as to why. And at number 9, very crazy, it's illegal to educate dogs in Connecticut, USA. What? So in Hartford, Connecticut, it is actually illegal to educate dogs ever. The high dog must remain education free. Now they don't go into specifics about what they actually mean by this. Does it mean teaching them a trick or does it mean like getting the dogs together and giving them a maths class or a chemistry lesson? If so, not allowed. In the same place in Connecticut, it is also illegal to kiss your wife on a Sunday. If you aren't husband and wife however, then presumably you can kiss. What's going on in Hartford? Someone tell me. In at number 8, you do not have to pay for food unless you are full in Denmark. So I feel like I would probably, well, definitely abuse this law. They'd be like, hello, here's your check. And I'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm not actually quite full yet, so I don't think I'm going to be paying. Like, what is this? Now the law states that one may not be charged for food at an inn unless the person considers themselves to be full. Also, fun fact, in Denmark it's illegal to start your car without checking for children sleeping underneath it. Like does this happen? I do not feel good about the next one. In at number 7, it is against the law for females to drive in Saudi Arabia. Are the women who are independent? Throw your hands up at me, unless you live in Saudi Arabia, in which case get back in the kitchen and don't even consider getting behind the wheel. Are you mad? The men folk won't like that. Yep, that's right, women must find drivers or get a male relative to drive them around should they be so bold as to wish to venture an unwalkable distance. Although to be honest, they actually are not allowed to leave the house without a male chaperone because apparently freedom of movement to women would make them vulnerable to sin. There have even been cases of women being banned from shops, instead they must ask their drivers to go in and run their errands for them. Now my thoughts on this are perfectly summed up by Queen Elizabeth II of England who, when a Saudi prince came to visit the UK, drove him around her palace in her car. Boss Queen. In at number 6, it's illegal to own more than two phallic sex toys in Arizona. Now the good news is if you live in Texas you're allowed six, but in Arizona unfortunately you are limited to two. Why? Because apparently obscenity laws are a bigger issue than gun laws. For those wondering, you may have more than two guns in Arizona. One of my personal favourites at number 5, it's illegal to reincarnate without permission in China. Good old China, having a say in literally everything their citizens can do. Now the extent of Chinese government's totalitarianism knows no bounds. Now the 2007 State Administration for Religious Affair Law strictly stipulates the procedures for reincarnation, saying that Buddhists are not allowed to reincarnate without written consent from the government. Now the law was said to be an important move to institutionalise management of reincarnation. Everyday problems. In at number 4, it's illegal to leave your house without wearing underwear in Thailand. So if you're in Thailand, absolutely do not think about going commando as you could be thrown in jail. The Thai law strictly states that everyone in public must be wearing underwear even if they're wearing other items of clothing to cover their modesty. Next up at number 3, absolutely crazy, it's illegal to be fat in Japan. Uh oh, the sugar police. Japan is known for its svelte population, but I for one did not know that it was because it's illegal to be fat. As recently as 2009, a law was passed that said every man aged 40 and over must not have a waist measuring 80 centimeters or above and every woman 90 centimeters or above. While I do find this to be a fundamental violation of their people's human rights, their obesity levels are just 5%, whereas in the United States over 1 in 3 people are obese, so maybe they're onto something. One from the UK up next, in at number 2, it's illegal to be drunk in charge of a cow or horse in Scotland. Now by in charge I'm not actually quite sure what they mean. Like, does it mean riding a horse or a cow? Or does it, like, mean being their elected supervisor? Now, it isn't exactly clear, but either way, since 1872, it is an offence to be intoxicated and in charge of a cow and or horse in Scotland. By the way, guys, until 1986, it was illegal to handle a salmon in suspicious circumstances, which is one of the greatest things I have ever heard. What does this mean? We don't know. Unfortunately, this isn't still a law, so I couldn't officially include it in the top 10. I feel like this is a pretty good rule to 
live by. Feeling shady? Get your hands off that salmon. Okay guys, so we have reached that all important moment in our most amazing top 10 laws you wouldn't believe exist when I am going to reveal probably the most ridiculous one. In at number one, it's illegal not to smile in Milan. Smiling is mandatory. So in Milan in Italy, it's illegal not to smile if you're a citizen. You are excused if you're attending a funeral or visiting someone sick in hospital. Other than that, if you're caught frowning, you could get a hefty fine. So guys, turn that frown upside down or the thought police will have you. Kicking off the list at number 10, pedestrian crossing. Okay, I see this far too often in the city. People just walking across the street whenever they want. They do a little, a little wave, a little smile, and then they just jaywalk right in the middle of like a highway. Everybody's slamming the brakes, and old Peggy Sue is just crossing wherever is most convenient for her. It's not fair. Well, Article 40 of Beijing's traffic law stipulates that drivers in motor vehicles can't just suddenly stop, even if it's at a crosswalk. Yeah, so if somebody's about to walk at a crosswalk, they have to wait until drivers go by. It's forbidden to stop at these crossings, and if you do so, you're risking a fine. Hopefully, just a warning. Just a warning not to stop at crosswalks. It's kind of weird. That's an odd slap on the wrist. Hey, I noticed you stopped. Um, don't. See ya. In our ninth spot today, we have the ice cream. Now this is a very bizarre law. Basically, it's illegal to put ice cream in mailboxes. First off, who in their right mind would even think to do something like that? Like, I'm done with this ice cream, where should I put it? The garbage? Hmm, no, the mailbox. So this law was implemented after a postal service worker put a chocolate ice cream in the mailbox in 2006. Since then, it's been made illegal and offenders are subjected to a hefty fine. You could be imprisoned for up to five years or be fined around 4,000 USD. In our eighth spot today, we have your neighbor's mail. Now, I'm sure this has happened to you at least once. But you go home, you check your mail, then you realize that the envelope has your neighbor's name on it. Oops, the mailman delivered your neighbor's mail to your address. So you're like, no problem, I'll just walk to their house and pop it in their mailbox. Boom, wrong, no, arrested. In Japan, it's illegal to hand your neighbor's misaddressed mail to them. This is featured in Article 42 of the Postal Law. Basically, they have this in place to protect the privacy of both the sender and recipient. So if any mail that's not yours accidentally gets in your mailbox, you have to send it back to the post office and then they handle it. Which seems like a lot of work when they literally live next door to you, but sorry, that's just how the law is. In our seventh spot today, we have the divorce law. This is another pretty wild law. So if you're a woman and you get divorced by law, you have to wait six months before remarrying again. And if you give birth to a child during those six months, the child is legally your ex-husband's. As for men, well, they can just remarry instantly. Now, there actually is somewhat a reasonable explanation behind this, somewhat. So let's say the woman does remarry instantly after divorce, and then she finds out, oh no, I'm pregnant. Well. How would she know who the father is? So the six month rule is in place so that it's gonna be clear who the kid's father is. In 2016, the law was amended. Now the law is women can remarry immediately after divorce as long as they aren't pregnant. If they are, then they have to wait 100 days to remarry. And a child born within 300 days of divorce is still legally considered the child of the original husband, even if it's not his. In our sixth spot today, we have the married couple. Now, most married couples do live together, but in Japan, they must. It's illegal for married couples to live separately unless they have a just cause. Now, why is this a law, you may ask? Well, it was passed to prevent divorce rates from spiking. If you're living away from your partner, the separation might take a toll on your relationship. But like I said, most couples do live together after marriage, so it's not that big of a law. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with indecent exposure. In Japan, it's illegal to expose your thighs or your bum bum in public. The law was passed in 1948 under the Light Crimes Act. However, this law is rarely enforced, and most women still like to wear mini skirts in public. But if the cops are really out looking for people, then you could be arrested and put in jail for up to 29 days. While we're on the topic of legs, crossing your legs in Japan is considered very casual and improper. In Japan, you are expected to sit tall with both feet on the floor and never cross your ankles over your knee. But don't worry, there's no law 
law surrounding this, so you won't be arrested for accidentally crossing over your legs. It's more so a manner thing, you know, it just can be perceived as rude. In our fourth spot today, we have smoking. Now, most people smoke outdoors and think that's the proper place to smoke. Well, not in Japan. Outdoor smoking is actually banned in Japan. The only place you can smoke outdoors is in designated smoking areas. But smoking is prohibited on the main streets. If you want to smoke, it has to be in these designated areas. They do this to be courteous of the people who don't wish to partake in smoking. What else might surprise you is that many restaurants and bars let you smoke inside. In our third spot today, we have drinking. In Japan, you are allowed to drink in public. It's one of the few countries where it's fine to walk around with a beer in hand. In fact, they even have vending machines that sell alcoholic beverages in public. That being said, if you're hammered walking around the streets and being rowdy, you can be arrested. That's a no-no. Plus, drinking is usually an evening activity, so it's frowned upon if people see you walking around with a drink at like 10 in the morning. Moving on to number two, we have the walkie-talkies. Okay, so you're planning your trip to Japan. You got your essentials, you got your underwear, your toothbrush, your toothpaste. Did you bring your walkie talkie? Now I know what you're thinking. Who would want to bring a walkie talkie with them to Japan? Don't ask me, maybe you have kids that get lost easily and it's too expensive to have an international phone plan. Well, if you're planning to bring walkie talkies, think again. It is illegal to own walkie talkies bought from another country. Now, this actually has a really good reason behind it. Japan relies heavily on their radio network to relay important information. Any foreign walkie talkies can possibly interfere with their signals, so they made them illegal. If you're caught with one, you can face one year in prison with fines up to around 9,000 USD. And in our number one spot today, we have the dancing. For the longest time, dancing at public venues was illegal. That's right, dancing was illegal. The only place you could dance was at venues with a special dancing license. And you could only dance until midnight. It was illegal as soon as it struck 12. They did this in 1948 as a way to try and get rid of prostitution in these dance halls. Just recently, they changed the laws so you can dance after midnight. But the venue has to keep their lights on. So as soon as it's midnight in Japan, the lights turn on if you wanna keep dancing. If venues don't follow this law, they could get in serious trouble. In at number 10, you are not allowed to be visibly sick in Washington. So for one, you're not allowed to walk around in a public place if you've got a common cold in Washington or demonstrate any kind of sickness. The Exposing Contagious Disease section of the Washington State Legislature says that a penalty will be imposed if a person exposes someone to sickness without their knowledge. If they're aware of it, according to the law, it's okay. So basically, if you're ill in Washington, then stay at home. If not, you're breaking the law. And also, I don't really know what happens if you become ill while you're out, but like, God help you. Number nine, never nude. Okay, how do I word this one here? We've all heard about it in some way, I'm sure. You know those websites that we visit after the sun goes down? Maybe you're scrolling through Reddit even, some random threads pop up, you're like, okay, sure, that's not what I clicked. It happens. I used to download music from the internet. The things I've seen in pop-ups alone, horrifying. I have to wash my eyes. Well, in China, the government monitors the internet, so none of the adult content really makes its way to your eyes ever, even if you wanted it to. You get what I mean? Anything scandalous is censored. Objectionable material as well, just in general, won't make it to the screen or even the book. Yeah, you can't even write about being nude because they'll toss literature right out. Only think dirty thoughts, don't say them. Number eight, born this place. The Huko system is an interesting one. When you're raised in a small town, you can't wait to grow up and move. Maybe it's the city life for you that you yearn for, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're sick of hearing trains go by every morning and you wanna to head to the country and hear some crickets. Having the choice to visit and move back and forth, rent out these places, that's a privilege. Depending on where you were born in China, you may be limited to the areas that you can and can't move to. You might literally be stuck living in the country. The government monitors every single citizen so if you spend more than three days away from your residence, you have to register for a temporary residential permit. They have the system in place so that residents can't just all migrate at the same time to cities and then cause a food shortage. Number seven, family time. Chinese culture centers heavily around respecting your elders. That's a huge element. And really, we need to enforce that everywhere, if I'm being honest. That's a great law. Yeah, I said law. Back in 2013, China introduced an elderly rights law, meaning they're not being neglected anymore. You don't visit Gam Gam, well, you're going to the slammer. Loneliness among the elderly is a major issue, so companies will even allow time off to visit your parents. 
My heart feels warm knowing this, honestly. My first job was at a retirement home and I used to love it. I used to keep my headphones out, I used to talk to all the old ladies, all the old dudes. I was like 16 years old, I was a garbage guy. I would do recycling. It was the best. I love talking to them. They're lonely. Talk to them. Adults are legally required to also stay in the loop, not just visit, shake a hand or two, and then leave. No, you have to spiritually connect with your elders in China. You can't just phone it in, literally. If you feel bad now, hit that thumbs up and go call your grandma. Number six, unauthorized reincarnations. Yeah, this one's fun. China's authorities created a law so Buddhist monks can't be reincarnated there without legal permission, of course. Always gotta get legal permission even to reincarnate. The State Administration for Religious Affairs believes that this was an important step that they had to take. This was put in place to limit the power of the Dalai Lama. So two separate Dalai Lamas might be chosen in the future. Yeah, like Captain America, different timelines. This is insane, hear me out. Beijing's view of the current Dalai Lama, the 14th, he's now 86 years old, and he said that when he was 90, he would make the choice whether or not he would be reincarnated which could end a role that's been in Tibet Buddhism for over 600 years. So yeah, like I said, it's a big deal. That's where laws come in play and make this whole process tricky. The government, they're trying to limit the power of the Dalai Lama since he's been living in exile in India since the late 50s. So we could have Beijing's approved Dalai Lama that was, you know, reincarnated and the one identified by Buddhist monks, two different ones. So if you're planning a reincarnation anytime soon, well, you better get approval from China first. The people of Tibet are very unlikely to accept a Chinese Communist Party appointed Dalai Lama. Number five, work friends. This next one's a little lighter and honestly, if this rule was in place over here right now, well, a lot of my friends wouldn't have jobs. You can't date coworkers in China. Yeah, and what's even better than that is that if you date somebody, sometimes your work will assess who you're dating like outside of the fields and then they have to approve of them. That's amazing. This internet company in China, their dating rule in the workplace got leaked. And let me read some of these rules out and then let's see if we agree here. Rule 42, males who have been employed for less than a year and females who have been employed for less than three months are prohibited from finding a boyfriend or girlfriend in the company. Okay, you gotta bust some tables first. Rule 43, female employees who have found a boyfriend outside the company and have decided to have relations with him must take the initiative to tell their superior. Only if the relationship is fitting for the company can she then continue to be employed and those who fail to report are directly expelled. So if you worked for Pepsi, Carol from Coca-Cola's accounting would be a no-go. Get what I'm saying? Rule 44, male employees under 25 are restricted from finding a girlfriend in the company. Hashtag grow up. Rule 46, frequently changing boyfriends and girlfriends within the company is prohibited. Those who have changed more than three times will be permanently expelled. So choose wisely. Number four, one child policy. And immediately darker. This one was phased out recently, but I have to bring it up. Introduced in 1979, the Chinese government made this rule where a majority of couples could only have one child. This was done to control population growth, but of course, from a human rights point of view, things got a little dicey. See, come 2015, things didn't magically change, it just switched to a two-child limit. And then finally, come 2021, it's completely phased out. The government saw this plan as a way to keep things running smooth, but in doing so, they reduced the fertility rate. And there ended up being a labor shortage because seniors needed those kids, as in the only one of those kids, to take care of them. No one was left to work, see what I mean? As per point number seven. Number three, tickets please. Medical systems are different everywhere, and in China, having that many people, things have to run smoothly. It's a must. There's more often than not a wait line for most commodities. They have something called healthcare tickets over there. Honestly, I kind of agree with this. I'm pretty on board. If you're looking to see a doctor, you gotta buy a ticket first, like a movie, a really slow, boring, coughing a lot movie. You can buy these tickets like you would movie theaters through an app or through a website, whatever works best. Because if you don't have a ticket, it would be an extremely long wait time just to see a doctor and talk and then plan something. After they've bought a ticket, patients can register it to a specific doctor that fits their needs, rather than wait in a room full of sick people all going to the same person, that slow process that I'm used to over here in Canada. This way, patients in China can just go specifically to the doctor that they need, rather than get referred over and over and over again and wait in these long lines. Do you agree with this fast pass system? Sound off below. Number two, busking. Here in Toronto, we have Busker Fest. It's amazing. My friends perform in it. It's loud. It's full of energy. It's an outdoor variety show. If you've been to any major city, at one point you've seen a kid butchering an Ed Sheeran song. That's busking. Buskers are common, and in Hong Kong, they're really not. You're not allowed to whip out a banjo, throw down a hat on the sidewalk, and start improvising with locals. It's an offense to play any musical instrument in the streets. So keep that trombone to yourself. And finally, number one, band. 
To cap this list off on laws you didn't know about, I figured I'd just rapid fire a few things that are banned in China. All of your favorite things, most of them are websites. Google is a no-go, YouTube as well, so you won't find my face over there. And speaking of face, Facebook too is banned, which honestly isn't really a total loss. Reddit is not allowed, so say goodbye to your late night scrolling. Netflix too is blocked, so no more binging and Netflix and chilling. Wikipedia, blocked. Zoom was blocked for a hot minute. Messenger, of course, being part of Facebook, or I mean Meta, is blocked. So if you wanted to block somebody, you couldn't because Messenger was blocked. Hmm, I'm saying block a lot. We're all blocked. No more local rappers as well spitting bars on your newsfeed either because SoundCloud has been blocked for eight years. I'm on board with this one, this one's fine. Until podcasts came out, we're like, okay, let's drop those. When we're done with scripts here, we toss them in Dropbox. I'll never take Dropbox for granted again because over there it's blocked. Imgur has been blocked for a couple years now too, so no more GIFs. GIFs? GIFs. GIFs. Definitely GIFs. Mm -hmm.